Nivmizit Perun versus Sav Savra, not Savara, Savra, Queen of the Golgari. Uh, this is not great, but we're going to keep it because we have Impulse and we can hopefully get into something off of that. Uh, as for the Polluted Delta, we'll just crack it for a Steam Vents and pass over to our opponent. Not going to play around and pretend that we've got Force Spike or anything like that. Even though that would be the correct thing to do, of course. Uh, our deck is a rebuild of niv Mizit Perun, different than the one that we uploaded previously. 5-5, five, five, can't be countered, Flying Dragon, costs 6 mana. Whenever anyone casts an instant or sorcery, we draw a card. Whenever we draw a card, we ping something for 1. And yeah, this rebuild is instants and sorceries, just like the last one, but it's more spell slingers, counters, burns, draw effects, things like that. Whereas the last build was combo centric and copying instants and sorceries for effects and uh, yeah, we we'll, can't do anything about that anyway. Uh, let them get into a rampant growth. Yeah, so I, I'm enjoying this one more to be honest because it's uh, it's a lot more simple, a lot easier to follow and uh, I don't mean for you, I mean for myself. Uh, I just enjoy the the simpler the better as far as I'm concerned. Uh, right, we have to put one into our hand. I think we just go for a telling time, to be honest. We have more lands. We go for a telling time and then everything else can go on the bottom in any order and we get into some new cards. That is a good one to get into. But we'll just hold up telling time and for all our opponent knows we have counter magic. But we can take advantage of doing nothing and go for Savra, Queen of the Golgari, a 2-2 for 4 mana and whenever our opponent sacks a black creature you can pay 2 life and that forces everyone else to sack a creature and whenever you sack a green creature you gain 2 life so if you're sacrificing black and green you can do both and uh, you lose no life and it just acts like a, a Grave Pact effect which is really good with uh, the new Izoni uh, Guilds of Ravnica commander uh, because that thing throws out black and green tokens. Uh, we put that into our hand. We put the mountain on top and the island on the bottom. And then we unfortunately don't play Jace next turn. I think we hold Cryptic Command so that we can counter something that our opponent does because they have six mana next turn assuming they crack the tribe elder and I don't want to run into something like a, a titan or even our opponent's commander so we will be cryptic commanding whatever they do here most likely uh, Dark Confidant I yeah, I'm not sure I like that, but I'm not sure I'm scared enough of it to counter it. That's probably a bait. And yeah, acidic slime, definitely not. So we don't want to fall behind to our opponent, who is clearly going for our lands. Uh, we will counter and draw. Yeah, I think counter and draw. I don't think I care about bouncing the Dark Confidant. I think Mystic Com Confluence does it anyway. Yes, we could do that next turn if we really want to. Uh, going for the Cascade Bluffs here. And pass over to our opponent. And see what they get off the Dark Confident. I was just going to say it's most likely a land because it always is. Unless I'm playing it, of course. Then it's uh, Then it's something huge, usually. Dark Confident, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, 2 mana 2 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. You lose life equal to the CMC of the card you revealed. And lands, of course, uh, don't have a CMC, so they don't have to worry about that. Uh, Svara. Yeah, I don't think I'm too worried about it, to be honest, because they don't have a sack outlet yet. 
can only have three cards in hand. Uh, and we can... I mean, we can just bounce both of those if we want to. Yeah, I think I want to get into some card draw and it effectively erases our opponent's turn. Uh, we can return, yeah, and then we'll draw a card. Not the best use of Mystic Confluence, but that's what's so good about it. It's a very good modal card. And we clear a land off the top. Get into Mana Drain, which is nice. So I think we go for... You have to play as many coloured lands as you can in this deck because in Mizzet Perun cost... Yeah, it costs six, but it's uh, all coloured mana. So go after the Jace Friends Prodigy and we will be flipping that over in no time. And most likely mana drain whatever our opponent goes for here. I don't know if we care about the Dark Confident doing that again. We will be able to flash it back with Jace though. Jace is uh, you tap and loot and when you have uh, you transform him when you have five or more cards in the graveyard which we already do. So we'll be able to flip him over to his Planeswalker ability. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep Savra sticking around. We don't have many creatures to worry about. The Hex Mage is relevant though. Yeah, we either have to sack Jace in response to them sacrificing the Hex Mage, or we have to, or it'll kill Jace when it's flipped over. So I think we have to mana drain that. That doesn't feel good, but I think that's something we have to go for. And now they can probably get something, yeah, Phyrexian Altar just lets them sacrifice anything. And Savra probably counts herself. Yeah, I was going to say she counts herself, so they're sacrificing Savra to get rid of Jace, which I don't mind them burning three cards to get rid of Jace, to be honest. That's actually pretty good for us. But they will be able to get the Dark Confident back out now, which they're probably going to do, yep. Yeah. So that's fine. And we are looking at a treasure cruise soon. Might be this turn, actually. We go, that'll be five and six mana. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think we just go for the treasure cruise here, to be honest. Uh, why don't I? Reliquary Tower and pay some generic mana for that. That's so we need to get rid of five cards now. We can't get Jace back. Polluted Delta, I don't mind. Uh, Cryptic Command. Mystical Tutor, they're quite expensive. Oh, and then we have to pay a blue, so we will do that and go to draw three cards off of the treasure cruise. Uh, we can hold up exclude, seeing as how this is apparently a... Yeah, we can go for the Is It Signet. Apparently this is a creature deck. They obviously need to sacrifice creatures to make the deck do what it wants to do. And then we'll go for the Ancestral Vision. And pass over to our opponent. We can hold up exclude, which is counter a creature spell and draw a card and they lose some life from three life from e-witness which is return a card from your graveyard to your hand that's a very good card for them to have now so when they get savra out they can either go for the hex mage or the sakura tribe elder and that will of course trigger oh but sakura tribe elder will only gain them three life uh, two life not three We'll gain them two life, it won't force us to sack because they have to do that with a black creature. So they could get back the Hex Mage and force us to sacrifice uh, Niv Mizzet because we'll be looking to get that out soon. And then with every instant and sorcery that we cast, which is plenty of those in the deck, that's the majority of the deck, uh, we will draw a card and ping something for one. And 
first ping will be onto this dark confident, I imagine. So another one can go on the E witness. Nature's claim onto. Yeah, that stops us from. That's pretty good. That stops us from countering the uh, this Sabra. So they should just go over to their second main here. Which is exactly what they're going to do. So well played by our opponent. They'll get in a free two points of damage. And then go for their commander again. We do have board wipes in the deck and uh, some odd bits of burn and things like that. So be intrigued to see what they go for here. They go for the acidic slime. Going for our lands clearly. Yeah, really unfortunate that we couldn't counter that. That's uh, well played by our opponent. I got greedy with the Ancestral Vision last turn. I like to play that as soon as I can. And I should have held up held up some mana from that. So now I think we just hold up Savra is I think have we counted it and it's killed itself? Will it cost 10 next turn? Or 8? Well, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they can go for it next turn, but they can't go for it again after that. So I think we hold up the exclude. And really try and get that, get that commander out of range for them. They get into an Oracle of Muldaya. So they've taken uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 off of the Dark Confident so far. So if we keep that around long enough, uh, I think that might actually kill them eventually. We are down to 25 and our opponent is at 16, mostly off of their own. Let's see if they can... So that was... Yeah, mostly off of their own Dark Confident is what I was saying there. That's 5 and 6. Oh, it only cost 6. I thought it had died more than that. I don't know where I got that from. So then it will cost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8. They can sack all these to get Savra out again, which I wouldn't be averse to. So we will exclude that. We get into Tower and the Sky Summoner. Yeah, we do have some uh, creatures that care about uh, us casting instants and sorceries. Not sure what I feel about those, to be honest. I might cut those and just get more more instants and sorceries into the deck. And we are just drawing into nothing but lands. Uh, we can go for a... Yeah, we'll get a Volcanic Island off of that. But first we will get Red Red off of the Red. And we'll see if our opponent has anything in hand for our niv mizzet Perun. If they do, it's most likely... Well, not necessarily most likely. It could be a creature, but... Okay, they take another one from Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is a superb draw for them. Really glad we didn't fail to hold up in a gate or something like that, because Skull Clamp will potentially get them back into this game. They thought sees us, which is potentially a mistake. Um, we will draw a card. That is Gutter Snipe, one of the few creatures in the deck. We'll get rid of Ewit. And I'm not sure if we want to get rid of Dark Confident or not, because it's dealing some damage to them. And we'll deal... What is this? Yeah, we dealt we dealt the damage there. Yeah, okay. Not sure what happened there. Uh, yeah, thought sees is um, they get us to discard a card and they lose two life. Not too incredibly worried about losing either of those, to be honest, because we're drawing into nothing but lands. We need to get into our card draw effect. And there is a Felwar stone on top of the library, which can give them blue or red. Okay, yeah, Savra, they know we can't counter that. They know we can't do anything, so I'll actually just crack the uh, the Misty Rainforest for a Steam Vents. 
and then pass over to our opponent, let them do whatever they want while we are f6. But they do have to pass priority over to us first. Okay, they're going to sacrifice the Dark Confident themselves off of the Phyrexian altar. And... Oh yeah, they got rid of our steam vents at the beginning of the game, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, that will force us to get rid of niv it unfortunately. We could try and get it out again next turn. Uh, that Phyrexian altar is going to do some work for them, as is that Skull Clamp. Uh, not as much as if they had kept the Dark Confident or the E-Wit. But they can Skull Clamp and uh, Phyrexian altar. These free sacrifice outlets are really good, especially if they give you mana. So I think the only play for them here is to get into a skull clamp onto the acidic slime and then sacrifice it. Or well, they could do it onto both. Probably want to be gaining some life now. So they will gain some mana from the Phyrexian altar and they'll draw two cards. And gain two life because they're sacrificing a green creature. They're getting to Sadistic Hypnotist. Which is five mana. Sack a creature. That's another sack outlet for them. They can only do it at sorcery speed. But it will have us discard two cards. Which is a really good effect for them. And they of course get into the Felwar Stone that was revealed before. Get down a Misty Rainforest. We can get rid of our Skull Clamp. Um, yep, yeah, it's uh, just more lands for us apparently. We'll just go for... They can sack the Sabra, and this will cost us 8. 4, uh, yeah, we'll have to tap out for that, because we've got a fat wad of nothing. We'll just have to make sure that we actually tap correctly, of course. So that is 2, and then... Yeah, we've done that right, thankfully. And we've just been... Pretty unlucky with our draws, to be honest. We haven't got into anywhere near as many counters as I would have liked. Uh, I think we can... Yeah, I think we can save the Wasteland. They have more than enough mana to do whatever they want with. And it's such a bad hand that we have, and such bad card draw that we have, that I'm actually not too worried about the Sadistic Hypnotist. And yeah, Liliana, Death's Majesty, uh, they are just drawing into all kinds of sack outlets. There's another one with Viserysia. Um but that will go into the bin, thanks to Liliana's plus one. But they get into Demonic Tutor instead. You know those games where your opponent just gets everything they need, and you don't get anything that you need? Yeah, that's one of these games apparently. They only have Sadistic Hypnotist in hand, but they can draw into that Demonic Tutor whenever they want by sacrificing the zombie. But they are going for Sadistic Hypnotist, and they'll no doubt sacrifice the zombie off of that and force us to discard. And they draw two cards, and that includes Playcrafter. What did I say about them having all the answers? They can actually play that this turn. Uh, I think we have to try and gutter snipe. Uh, yeah, not sure if we'll even be able to keep that on the field, to be honest. I think we might have to just rely on burn. They're down to five life. And they can sack the Oracle of Muldaya and the Sabra to gain four life. But they're, they're getting to the point where Sabra is starting to get pretty uncastable. I think if they tap out for a Savra another couple of times then they're not going to be doing anything else on that turn. Yep, they're going for a Misty on a basic forest most likely, yep. And some more sack outlets for them. Although that won't do anything with Savra on those uh, on those Scion creature tokens. But they will get to Scry off of that. So Play Crafter and uh, Demonic Tutor I think they have in hand. 
most likely going for demonic tutor now yeah and we obviously can't see what they grab off that we really want to get into something like a cyclonic rift and just have our opponent start from scratch and buy ourselves some time we can play out the gutter snipe next turn and force them to sacrifice something black like this sadistic hypnotist they might just oh they'll probably kill the reassembling skeleton with the sadistic hypnotist and take out our our hand so there we go the gutter snipe plan is out so we just need to see what we can get into now they have animate dead which is just one drawer after another with them not sure how close we are to this ancestral vision actually oh we're up for casting it which is excellent just when we need it okay well we get yeah do we get rid of skull clamp or the phyrexian altar I think we get rid of the Phyrexian Altar because we have Lightning Bolt in hand. Uh, how much is, I think, Niv Mizzet is 10 now. 4 and 6, yeah, that's 10. And we're, we'd have to tap out for that, which I'm not about to do. It's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, I'm not about to do that. Uh, we will get rid of this because they can only do it at instant speed, at uh, sorcery speed. And we don't want them taking out our hand. And then we will go for a braid on our turn as well, just to keep them from pulling any shenanigans with that. And they got rid of their Viscera Seer sack outlet. Um, hopefully they didn't get another sack outlet with the uh, Demonic Tutor. not going to get rid of their ancient tomb with the wasteland now because I want them to take two life with it I don't think they will okay yeah they can reassembling skeleton we of course have disallowing hand so we can counter spell activated ability or triggered ability and that is returning yeah we don't want that so we will counter it and keep our opponent from doing that they clearly want to get a um, a sack outlet back out of the graveyard. They can do that again next turn, but it will kill Liliana. So I will. Yeah, that's the problem. If we tap out for Niv Mizzet next turn, they can just get it back with. Ah, oh, they have Animate Dead as well. Um, yeah, I don't see what we can do here unless we pull a, a monster top deck. Yeah, E Witness gets back. Sadistic Hypnotist, I imagine. Skull Clamp can go on the E Witness to draw them more cards. I mean, this is Golgari 101 messing around with the graveyard. No, they go for the Frexion Altar, which is a more difficult card to get rid of. And then yeah, they are right back where they where they were last turn. And they're at four life, which is of their own doing but they managed to stabilize we just really need to get into some kind of burn spell cyclonic rift anything that can buy us time we don't run any um, extra turn cards in the deck which maybe we should but I think I just want to get into more cheap card draw and things like that so have to see how the deck plays out over the course of the next few games and see how much I want to do that. Reassembling Skeleton of course going really well with Skull Clamp especially in the late game. Paying three mana to draw two cards is no problem. Uh, Rex Age is not too relevant for us. And Pirate Rites is yet another sack outlet. That's really all this deck is, is uh, sacrifice outlets and yeah, of course we just draw into more lands. I wouldn't mind if we had 42 lands in the deck, but there's there's 38. I might cut it to... See, the problem is if I cut it down to 36, then uh, 
or, or 35. I mean, I'd never cut it down to 35, but if I did 36, I'd never draw into any land. So this is just one of those games. Um, it's a good game to our opponent. Not going to sit it out anymore. And uh, we are conceding right there. So you at least got to see what Savra, Queen of the Golgari, can do. She is a... She's a good commander. Uh, I usually use her as part of the 99. Maybe I'll have to build a... I have enough Golgari commanders, I think. But yeah, she's a good uh, Golgari commander. And uh, hopefully also you got to see a little bit of what niv can do. Um, actually, I don't think we saw any of what niv can do in this game because we didn't manage to keep niv on the field. But um, yeah, that's really what the deck wants to do is counter in the early game and if we don't counter we get instant speed card draw uh, that type of thing uh, maybe need a little bit more burn in the deck I'm gonna keep playing it and see how it plays out I uh, only built the deck today actually wanted to rebuild it because I didn't think much of the last build of niv -Mizzet. so hopefully you enjoyed that more to come I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel thank you for watching